Okay. So let's see if we can work this problem. It's similar to one we had in homework. A little bit different. These uh, magnitude of these vectors at F1, F2, and F3 are unknown, and we want to find those values such that the uh, resultant of all of these is equal to this value. So we should be able to, we have three components, X, Y, and Z, and we have three unknowns. So we should be able to form three equations and three unknowns. So let's first uh, do the hard part. As we talked in class before, um, F1, F2, and F3, the geometry for these are given such that the resulting moment of each of these couples will be either in, for F1 will be in the Y direction, uh, for F2 will be in the Z direction, I'm sorry, the X direction, and then for F3 is in the Z. So those three vectors should be pretty easy to write. Uh, the one that be a little more challenging is the one at F1. And again, if you look at the geometry, um, we want this line of action of this valve stem uh, it starts off at 0.3 meters and ends at 0.3 meters. So it looks a little, a little strange, but it, it actually is only in the x, uh, y plane. So first, um, I'll find the magnitude of this couple, just the force times the perpendicular distance, and then I'll project it along this axis. So um, first, the magnitude of the force at F4 I'm at here the moment due to the 4 will be 4 times that perpendicular distance. So what is that going to be? Well, according to this, the magnitude is 150 for the force. Uh, that's kilonewtons. And what's the distance? We want the perpendicular distance. Uh, maybe I'll try to draw some additional lines here to show you the line of action of those. And remember, we want this perpendicular distance between them. So you can see that that would form this, this handle would be the hypotenuse of that angle at 0.3 meters. And if you look carefully, you can see the angle there is 30 degrees. So the distance then should be uh, 0.3 meters times the, the way the angle is given, the cosine of 30. So that should be a, a value that we can compute. Can somebody do that for me? Now, now it's, it's direction. Well, if we look down on it, let's, let's see if I can draw this. Um, Somebody get it? I got 39. 39 exactly? 38.97. 38.97, 38 that's pretty good. I'll just put that in there. And that's going to be kilonewton meters. It's just new. Is that right? It's just new. That's just a K. To oh, the K was the direction. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to try to draw a, draw, uh, a figure as I'm looking down from the top. So I've got my uh, positive x-axis going there, and I've got my positive y-axis going there, and then where is my, my vector? Well, point 0.2 in the x-direction and point 0.2 in the negative. So this would be where the point would occur, and um, I'm perpendicular to that. So this is the this is the line of action of that, uh, that valve stem. You see that? So if this is uh, 0.2 meters, and this is 0.2 meters, I know this angle is going to be 45. And then this is perpendicular, so this is going to be 45. So I know everything I need. So I met my vector for my 
moment is actually in that direction. You see that? So I know the magnitude. So the vector, the moment, will be this magnitude, M4. And then what's the components in this direction? Well, in the x direction, it's a uh, positive point two. And you have to divide it by the magnitude. Um, so it's going to be, let's do it this way. So it'll be point two over the squared. What's point two squared plus point two squared is point oh eight. Is that right? To get the... Uh, component in that direction? Yeah, you're right. And then in the negative, I bet that is very close to the cosine and sine of 45, isn't it? That might have been easier to write that way. So I guess we could put all of that together. What did, what did these numbers turn out to be? What's, what's that? Um, it was 0 0.707. That's square, yeah, sine cosine of 45. Yeah. So great. So multiply that times the 38.97, what do you get? 38. Pretty close to like 28 something? Mm hmm 27.56. 27.56, and that will be I minus 27.56J, and that should have the units of Newton meters. So that was the, this is the hardest part of the problem. Any questions about that? So let's go back and do now the moment vector for one, which is here, it's going to be the magnitude F1 times the distance. The distance between F1 is 0 0.2 meters. And what direction is it in? We're using the right-hand rule. Uh, you can see that it's going to, the vector is going to be pointing in, let's see if I can draw this for you well. It's going to be pointing in this direction. So that's going to be the minus J direction. The moment for three in vector form. Well, I don't know why I skipped two. Let's do two first, sorry. Uh, it's here. So that would be F2. And again, it's point two distance between it. And when that one rotates, it's going to be positive in this direction using the right hand rule, which is positive I. And the last one, the moment vector for three will be the force at three times the distance, which again is point two. And when that one rotates, the vector will be in this direction using right hand rule, which is minus k. <coughs> so there's our four moment vectors. So all we have to do now is just sum all the moments. And the sum of the moment should be equal to this. So we'll do it uh, component-wise. So if I sum all my moments and just say the x direction, what do I get? Well, from 4, I get uh, 27.56. Uh, 1 computes nothing in the x direction. Uh, there's 1. Plus F2 times 0.2 meters and nothing from here. 
So that should be equal to the x component here, which is 50. So I should be able to solve for F2. Uh, 50 minus 27.56 divided by 0.2, what's that? Like 23. 11.22. 11.22? Mm -hmm. Anybody else get that? Yes, no, maybe? I got 112.2. Yeah. 112? Oh. Okay. I got 112. <coughs> That's close. So I just missed it by 112.2. Mm -hmm. We'll just move it over there. I'll scratch it out. 112.2. Okay, I like that. So let's look at the components of the moment in the x direction or the i direction. So from this one up here, I get. Um, minus 27.56 and there's one so minus F1 times 0.2 meters <coughs> IK so that's it and that should be equal to uh, negative 45 meters so we should be able to solve for uh, <coughs> F1. Bless you. Uh, thank you. Uh, let's see, what's that going to be? I don't know. 80 something? Anybody get a number for that? 87.2. 87 <coughs> And then last, we'll sum the moment components in the z direction. Our, our M4 has no z component. No z, no z. All we have is minus F3, again, times 0.2 meters. And that's going to be equal to the z component, which is minus 20. That should give us F3. So that's what, that's just a hundred. So there's the, resu there's the results. Any questions about that? I have two questions. Oh, yes? First, are you going to, you're going to scan those and put us online? Uh, what I've been doing is, uh, when I do the overheads, I've been recording the video Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. And I've been putting the YouTube videos on the eCourseWare page. Okay, right. I haven't been putting up the PDF of just the page. I can do that too if you'd like. I just stopped if you don't want to sit there and listen to me drone on for 10 minutes to work through the whole problem. <laughs> I can do both. It's not a problem. I can do that. Okay, thank you. And the sure. second question, with a right hand rule, the thumb goes with... No, the fingertips go with the force, right? Right. So, um, for example, so the thumb is what you're like this one here. Right. So, if I put my fingers in the force of this force and curl it towards the other one, right. my thumb—it's hard to see here. My thumb is down. Okay, so um, you won't be able to see this on the this video, way. but it's easier to see here. My hand is a little bit smaller, so my fingers are in this direction, and I curl it towards the other finger. My thumb is down. But you're going this direction? Because well, I'm following the force. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I was looking at the one with the... So um, like even this one. Yeah, I'm yeah. putting my fingers in the direction of F1, roll it into the other one. So your thumb has to go that way. Okay. So the thumb is what you're looking for to fingertips to follow the force. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Even when we do our, our axes, we put our fingers in the direction of X, we roll it into Y, that tells us where Z is. So your right hand's pretty, pretty handy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
I'll stop that.